I like it when you all stop in to talk about penny stocks. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, not Monday as I've been thinking all day, February 20th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks all through the day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market, the OTC or the major exchange. And I'm constantly keeping my eye out for penny stocks that have potential to make us money. And I've got one for you right now. This caught my attention this morning like it did a lot of people because she had a flash surge. This is ticker BFRI, BioFrontera. She had two big pieces of news come out today about money big money. And the stock exploded, going from about $0.70 cents to $2.50, all pre-market. That's about 300, 350% run. Now, she has been coming down all day, which isn't the best situation unless you're not in it already. Now is going to be a good time to be looking for a buying opportunity. We want to see her come down and find that strong support or that strong SMA and bounce off of it and start running again. And that's where she looks like she's at right now. So BFRI finished the day at a buck 15 and she was up over 50% today. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. You got to love that. Better than the OTC for a lot of reasons. One, free transactions. You don't have to pay to buy your stock. You don't have to pay to sell your stock. It's free all the time. Plus, you can trade pre-market, after-market, which is where this run was this morning. And I got to tell you, there are a lot of stocks on the NASDAQ that run strong pre-market. Absolutely. And even if you can't be there to actually trade, you can have orders set up you know, if you were in at 70 cents and you don't know when it's going to happen, there's no doubt about that. So you put in a standing order, good till canceled or something, including extended hours, right? Don't forget that. And if you're at 70 cents and you say, you know what? I'd be willing to sell if it hit two bucks. Well, put in an order for 50% of what you hold for two bucks. One day you may wake up and have a chunk of cash there and it sold and you made your profit on it. So even if you're not awake or monitoring the pre-market, aftermarket periods, you can still trade it with a little bit of forethought. So what is this company all about? Well, they tell us here that they engage in the commercialization of pharmaceutical products for the treatment of the skin. Everything from acne to skin lesions. Now, they tell us here, I don't know if they have more, but they tell us of two drugs that they've got, Amaluz, which is for acne, and they're looking for other indicators, which means other reasons that you can use this drug. The more indicators you have, the bigger the market is for your drug. The other drug is Zepi, which is a prescription drug for the treatment of Impetigo, which is a lesion caused by bacteria. They also have another product to fight those lesions called the Roto LED Lamp. This is some sort of photodynamic therapy to fight lesions. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Holy cannoli! See, there was a lot of excitement around this company today. She went from under a half a million as her average for the last 30 days to over 28 million. That is over 56 times her normal volume. In other words, 5,600% increase. Whoa. Taking a look at her share structure, we've got a low float. Look at that. Outstanding share count is only 1.5 million. Our float cannot be any higher than that. Now, being on the NASDAQ, there is a minimum criteria for floats. They cannot have anything less than a million shares. And I don't know what their float is. Hopefully, it's not less than a million, but I know it's not going to be more than 1.5 million. So we've got ourselves a really small float here. So think about that if you haven't before. If they sell 10 million shares, they have to sell every share out on the market 10 times over. That day, 10 times over. And what if half the people don't want to sell their shares? Now there's only half as many shares for all those people who want them. Now we have a supply and demand issue. And that can be like a short squeeze. You can really get that price to start to run hard and fast.
Market cap for the company, currently 1.1 million. Financials for BioFrontiera. Not bad, huh? Over the last four years, she has grown a little with a dip in the center. She went from 26 million up to 28 million. We know it's millions and not thousands because they tell us here, you've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on any of these charts. And they're bringing home profit every single year. So they're looking good. Quarterlies, well, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, the end of their third quarter, 2023, they were just under $9 million, And they brought home $4.3 million. And they're always bringing home profit, whatever they're making. So they're not looking bad in that regard. Balance sheet for the company. In the bank, they've got about $3.4 million. Total assets is $34 million. Total liabilities, 33. It ain't much, but we're not holding any deficit. We've got just over $1 million stockholder equity in this company. Taking a look at the disclosures. All right, we have got an 8K here. I've got some notes. Let me see. Uh, right, that 8K we are actually going to see in the news. And then we've got an SC13G. These are always good news, folks, always. These are new investors coming in who become new owners. They buy enough shares to qualify as a new owner. They get a percentage of the company. And this one was 9.9%. .9%. Not by anybody we know, but it is a new owner. And that's always good to see. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So I am looking at current news from February. We've got three pieces here. One that came out on the 5th, the company announces FDA filing of supplemental new drug application for Amluz to permit up to three tubes per use. Okay, Amluz is a drug for acne right now. That's the way I see it, and they want to get it to be used for other things. Now, I'm not quite sure what three tubes per use means I was reading this and I couldn't figure it out. I don't know if they're little tiny tubes and you break them open and you're allowed a maximum of three tubes per day or something. I honestly don't know. But anytime you see a new drug application going with the FDA, you know they're making progress with that drug. Then on the 20th of February, the company got a private placement of $16 million. This is a private investor coming in, giving them a lot of money. This has been divvied up into two payments, $8 million up front and an additional $8 million down the road when they hit a milestone, when they do something at some point in time. So they've got money now and they got money later. And then we've got a piece of news. Again, this one came out today. The company announces restructuring of supply agreement with BioFrontiera AG. Now, this is interesting. Read the headline with me closely. BioFrontiera Inc. announces restructuring of supply agreement with BioFrontiera AG. Obviously, there's some relationship here between the two. I just don't know what it is, but I'm sure they're under the same umbrella somewhere, somehow. So, what it looks like here is that BFRI gets their Amulus from BioFrontiera AG, and they are now going to be getting it at a 50% discount, and they get a lot of this drug, so this is going to save them a lot of money. Plus, they are getting control of all the U.S. clinical trials for that drug. Now, they tell us down here, this amendment provides significant value in both the short and long term. In the short term, we will be paying half of what we had paid in the past for the product. In the long term, controlling U.S. clinical trials will enable us to better manage costs and ensure efficiency, which we believe will lead to new indications in the label and increased revenue sooner. Now, that new indications is real important. Right now, it's probably only being used for acne and nothing else. But if they can get it to be used for blemishes, for blotches, for discoloration, for anything else, it's going to increase the marketability of the drug. They go on to tell us, we believe that the renegotiated terms along with the capital committed in our simultaneous financing, the one we just read about, the $16 million, 
could be sufficient for the company achieving profitability by 2025. This will be further supported by the potential label change of Amulus for the use of up to three tubes per treatment currently under review by the FDA. I wish I understood what they meant by that. So that's what you've got going on here. You've got the FDA looking at a drug form. You've got $16 million coming into the company right now. And they've just gotten their supply of this drug for 50% less than they were paying before. That is a huge savings. And they're going to make more money most likely just because of that fact. So I think because she rips so high and she's come down, not below where she started to run, she is above it. So she's landed in a good, strong area. I think she's looking promising for another strong surge. Let's go take a look at this chart. My, oh my, that chart's as sweet as pie. That is a beautiful, atypical breakout chart. We are looking at BioFrontera, ticker BFRI, and we're going to chart this in my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So this is a four-hour, six-month view. We've got our low about six months ago of 41 cents, and then at the beginning of July, they had a 1 in 20 reverse split. The price was roughly 50 cents, pushed it all the way up here to $10. So initially, this looks like a successful reverse split because it did not come tumbling right back down afterwards. It was about 10 days she went sideways until she hit that 20-day SMA, bounced off of that, pushing up to a new high of $13.45, fell back down to that 20-day SMA, laid on that for a few days, and then inadvertently crossed a 200-day haul. Now, the 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA, and it gets a lot of respect from penny stocks. Well, once she crossed over that 200-day haul, she lost all of her gumption. She fell fast and furious down to the 200, so quick she couldn't even slow down. She went right through that 200, double calamity, continued falling, all the way down here to a low of about $3.25. I'm going to draw a support right there because that is strong. You can see how she was bouncing on it, but not strong enough. She continued falling right down here to a low of roughly 70 cents. And she was underneath everything here. And doing nothing, just going sideways, she crossed her 200 haul. She crossed her 20 day. And once she crossed that 50, the news came out today, she exploded. All this volume came into the picture when we really haven't had any volume to talk about. Pushing that price all the way up to the 200 and even through it. And yes, it has fallen all the way back down, but that's a perfect landing. If this was the Olympics, I'd be holding up a 10. That's perfect. It came right back down on her 9-day SMA, which is over the 50. Everything is looking sweet here. Osculators are showing good strength. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is at a crossover. It's climbing. Our MACD has crossed the signal line. It, too, is climbing, though it's cooled off just a little bit. And our RSI, wow, that took a big jump, going from 43 up to 83 and then falling back to 62. That's a pretty decent four-hour chart. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, that's not a bad-looking chart at all. Our 200-day SMA was coming down hard here like a ski slope. And right now, she is starting to level off. This is where you see your breakouts. And what do we have? There's our first breakout, perfectly timed with the news, don't you think? She shot way up, came all the way back down, and she is over the 200. She did not come back down underneath it. Here comes our 20, 50, and 200 haul. They also are all pushing up. Man, that 200 haul is really at a strong turn, and they're about ready to cross that 200 SMA. Those are all going to be golden crosses. You can think of them each as a turbo boost to the price. Our oscillators, well, they were really strong at the beginning of the day, and they really cooled off at the back part of the day, as you would expect. But that really looks like a beautiful setup to me. Let's come on down to that five-day, five-minute. All right, there's our low bubble of 63 cents. Yesterday, she closed at about 75 cents, took that rip all pre-market, right? She jumped pre-market at about, it looks to be about 8 in the morning, 
And in five minutes, five minutes or less, she hit that high. So you had your 300% run in five minutes. Looks like it came down and did it one more time. Came all the way back down, landed on her nine day, stayed up there, actually opened up at a pretty decent price compared to yesterday's 75 cents. She opened up at around a buck 35, buck 38, somewhere in there. Took a nice jump, came back down, went sideways, broke her 50 and has fallen down to the 200 day SMA right now. And it looks like she's trying to bounce off of that. Now, let me grab my Fibonacci. If you watch my show, you know I always do this with big bounces or big dips. I poke the bottom and I poke the top. And what I'm primarily looking for initially is the center. This tells me, not that I, I need any problem with this, but I am looking to see where she lands. If she lands above the halfway point, chances are she's going to continue climbing. If she comes down below the halfway point, chances are she's going to continue falling until she finds a strong SMA, which is what really happened here. She came down, bounced up, got through the 50, couldn't hold it, and she's fallen down to a strong SMA. And she's sitting there right now. Now, what these are, are algorithmic supports and resistances, and we can trade on them. Normally, we find these by connecting them to historical price points, like that one I got up top, that one right there. We're going to trade off that one. We're also going to trade off these because the price will respect these, believe it or not. So there will be an initial push trying to get up to this 50%. That's just the way the algorithm works. I'm not saying it's 100%, but when you have a big rip, it comes down, finds itself a strong support or strong SMA, it then starts to push up to that halfway point. Once it gets above that, it's like finding second or third gear, it starts to move faster. So we're looking forward to get through these resistances and then hit, what's that about? About a buck 55, and then we could start pushing even stronger. Our oscillators on the five minute, uh, they're all pretty planted right now. Honestly, everything is just going sideways. Now, just for peekaboo, let's take a look at the 15 minute and 30 minute. 15 minute, I'm going to get rid of these bars just so it's easier to see. There we go. Keep my halfway point. So where is our price sitting? We were on the 50 day. Look at that. Riding that 50 day and then we broke it and we have fallen underneath it. She could come down to 79 cents if most people are using the 15 minute. That's why she's hugging this. People are using this chart. Now let's check the 30 minute. Let's see what we got over there. Hugging the 20 day SMA. You can see that. But in any case, she has broken through everything on all the charts. So right now she is falling. Now, hopefully, this would be as far as she'd fall about 91 cents to the 200 day haul on our 30 minute chart. If more people are watching the 15 minute, oh God, it could come all the way down to 79 cents. On the five minute chart, it's bouncing. So we really like the five minute chart and truly it is bouncing, right? It did not actually touch the 200. It came down, got close and it's pushing and it's fighting to get on top of the nine right now. You can't climb until you're on top of the nine. And right now she is struggling to get there. Everything is pretty flat right now. We need it to start turning up. I like BFRI. I think she has a lot of potential because she does have a low float. I like that she has positive stockholder equity. The chart is set up for a breakout and they've got big news about money. They're getting their product at 50% less. They've got 16 million that just came in, 8 million in the front door, another 8 million down the road, and they've got a new product that the FDA is considering. Got a lot going on with this company. But I didn't do all the due diligence, did I? Of course I didn't. So get out there and do your own due diligence if you're going to invest in this company. Even if you're going to day trade it. Because the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.